Recently, Korea welcomed the return of the Wagyu Jangak books, which had been looted by French soldiers 145 years ago. Although rightfully ours, the books were repatriated on a loan and not a permanent return. Currently, international agreements make it difficult to enforce the return of cultural property to their rightful owner nations. In light of this, how should we go about retrieving our valuable cultural property, which remains stranded in various locations around the world? Join our experts as they discuss this question in this week's episode of In Focus. After 145 years in exile, the first batch of the Wegyu Jangak books finally returned home safely on April 14th. Out of the 297 volumes being returned, 294 volumes are of the Uigue, illustrated records of the Joseon Dynasty Court Protocol. These books used to be stored in the Wegyu Jangak Royal Library in Kanghua Island until they were looted by the French army during their invasion in 1866. The return after 145 years is the end result of a 17-year-long negotiation process. The Wegyu Jangak books mark a rare victory in international efforts for the return of cultural property. However, many more treasures of Korean heritage are still waiting to be reclaimed. Only 8,000 of Korea's stolen cultural property have been returned so far, while 140,000 still remain scattered abroad. How should Korea negotiate their return? Join us as we discuss Korea's policy of cultural property retrieval in today's program. Welcome back. To discuss the issue of retrieving our cultural properties, we have two expert guests in the studio. Sitting on my right is Professor Jae Kyung Lee of the School of Law at Kanguk University. Welcome to the program. Nice um, sitting on my left is Ms. Hyun-suk Lim. Uh, you're the senior researcher at VANC, which is the Voluntary Agency Network of Korea. Yes. Welcome to the program and thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, let's start um, talking about uh, those books returned to Korea this yes. time by France. Um, what kind of books are they and how valuable are they? Um, before I talk about these books, I'd like to talk about Wegyu Jangga. Mm. Wegyu Jangga was uh, one of royal libraries during the Joseon Dynasty. Uh, most books were kept in this library were Uge. Uge is a collection of royal protocols and it contains procedures and details of protocols uh, such as uh, royal, royal weddings, funerals, and receiving the foreign missions from other countries. And other Uge were kept in other uh, loyal libraries or listed on the Memory of the World program of UNESCO in 2007. It means that these books are very valuable Korean documentary heritages. And uh, the books were returned to Korea were uh, looted by French army in 1866 during the invasion of France, the, some of these books were looted and other books uh, were burned. Um, but in 1970s, the one Korean scholar, Dr. Pyongsun Park, discovered these books from the National Library of France. And after her discovery, the Koreans and the government have tried to retrieve these books from France and finally 75 books were returned to Korea in last April 14. Oh, I see, so it sounds like very uh, important books yes. um, um, and I think it's in a way it's very fortunate that uh, they were not burned yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, now we have the chance to uh, actually uh, look at those books. So. Uh, I understand that we've had the first delivery yes. of uh, several yes. um, this time. Now, once they are here, where are they going to be stored? Uh, these books will be screened and secured in the National Museum of Korea. The museum has the storage, the 20, 21 storages in their basement. So, the, this, one of these storages will be uh, the storage for these books. Um, Professor Lee, according to a study conducted by South Korean government, there are over 
140,000 cultural property uh, scattered all around the world, in, in a way stranded overseas. Uh, could you tell us more about the statistics, the current state and the history of how they got there? Why yeah. are they there? Yes, uh, we have many uh, the stolen and uh, illegally exported uh, of uh, our own uh, cultural property in overseas. According to the uh, governmental uh, research, uh, we have um, uh, over uh, 60,000 uh, property, uh, cultural property in Japan and uh, uh, 20,000 in U.S. and also we have uh, 3,000 in, in China and 3,000 in uh, uh, the U.K. and 2,000 in Russia and in, in France we have uh, 2,000, over 2,000 cultural property of our own uh, stranded uh, and, uh, and many other nations. That's very. Uh, that's um, the official number. So um, unofficially, there are more uh, stolen and exported illegal, illegally exported cultural property of our own overseas. So uh, they uh, most of uh, the cultural property stranded overseas has been uh, extracted away uh, during the war and sometimes. Uh, by uh, the illegal uh, the transaction between the, the, the private uh, persons. Mm -hmm. So uh, we should uh, uh, get, uh, set up uh, the Office of Research about the, the uh, many more uh, cultural property overseas from now on. I see. So those numbers are only for the cultural property items stolen or illegally or forcefully taken from Korea. Right. And the number is huge. Yeah, very huge. And given that we've had one century of very tumultuous history, mm -hmm. colonialism mm -hmm. and the experience of war, mm -hmm. it's not very surprising. So how many of those stolen properties have we taken back and through what kind of process have, was that possible? Yeah, uh, in, in 1965 uh, we have uh, uh, the treaty between uh, Korea and, and Japan uh, to uh, take back most of our uh, cultural property, uh, which is just stranded in, in Japan. And also, we uh, try to uh, negotiate the, the, the return of our cultural property with France as well. Like, uh, so it's been like uh, 30 years since we tried to uh, take back most of our cultural property stranded in overseas. Yeah, but, uh, and, and last year, uh, we have a, a G20 summit uh, in, in Korea, in Seoul, and uh, the, the friends, uh, they, uh, we and uh, the friends uh, uh, signed the contract to the lease the, the, the cultural property of our own, and also the Japan, uh, they uh, will, uh, they, to sign the contract to uh, return the, the mm -hmm. property of uh, our own. Mm, so we are expecting the more uh, the returning of our cultural property uh, coming years. So it's, it's not an easy process or uh, anything that we can expect to have all these properties back in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time it uh, had to go through a very lengthy negotiation. Um, well. Um, so do we have them back uh, in large numbers so far, or are they just small fraction very of, small, very not, small fraction yeah, right, of the right, stolen right. items? Yeah. I see. Um, Ms. Lim, um, is there any international consensus or trend in uh, the repatriation of cultural properties? I'm sure that not only Korea, but yes, other yes. countries are yeah. interested in this, and some countries have them, and some countries yeah. want them back. Yes. And given the you know, long history of colonialism and yeah. war, um, I imagine there is some kind of consensus forming. Um, yeah. Is there any? The, the movement of uh, uh, retrieving the, the looted cultural properties are increasingly massive mm -hmm. in international society, especially the Egypt and the Peru and, uh, and other countries also are trying to retrieve their cultural properties from France, USA and UK. So for example, the U Yale University in USA uh, returned about 
46,000 relics to Peru, and the Egypt uh, re received the 30, 31,000 cultural relics from other countries so far. So the more countries are trying to retrieve their cultural properties, and the I heard that uh, the heads of these countries who want to want to retrieve their cultural properties had a summit in last year. So uh, there will be more. Um, there will be more global movement. I'm sure that there are many complicated issues. So yeah. international consensus, I, I guess, is very important in yes. this context. Professor Lee, is there any trend or consensus that you can talk about from the, the legal point of view? Right. Uh, even though uh, there are many uh, more uh, negotiations going on on a nation-to-nation uh, -nation basis, but uh, the mainstream about the returning the cultural property is about the, uh, the national uh, treaty with many countries. So it would be very helpful if we can get more uh, countries uh, enter into the, the, uh, the national agreement, like uh, the France and Japan. But most of uh, the developed countries like U.S., Japan, and France, they uh, try to not to get into the, uh, the, uh, the national international uh, treaty because they don't they are not happy about the terms of uh, uh, international uh, treaty so uh, we should uh, be watching uh, if they can uh, get into the uh, agreement internationally the return this time the return of the Wagyu Jungkook books was uh, I think a great achievement by yeah. Korean government Definitely. Uh, and it's the, the outcome of a lengthy discussion mm -hmm. and diplomatic mm -hmm. efforts. Mm -hmm. But I hear that some people are not very happy about the conditions of the return. Uh, could you tell us more about it? Okay, as we see uh, the, the return of uh, cultural property in France, it is not a uh, the permanent transfer of ownership, it's a five-year lease. So we have to renew the, uh, the, uh, the lease contract every five years. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's very uh, discouraging news to many uh, Korean people. Uh, we don't, even though it's a property of our own, but we don't have ownership officially. I mean, the legally speaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, it will be um, a bit uh, renegotiated uh, in the near future. But at least uh, we uh, have the luxury of enjoying the. The, our own cultural property in our own land, so that would be a very uh, big achievement for us. So it's the, uh, just the, the start point of uh, cul uh, retaining our cultural property. So from a practical point of view, we yeah. have them here, yeah. and um, so the Koreans will have the chance <laughs> to look at them. So, and we do have the technology and we have the system to safely uh, mm -hmm. store them and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, we exhibit for the public. So right. uh, f from a practical point of view, it's, uh, it doesn't matter, but in terms of legal ownership, we don't have it yet, and uh, some Koreans are yeah, not happy about it. At least we have a very uh, welcoming news for us, but legally speaking, uh, uh, it should be uh, uh, very uh, renegotiated uh, in the near future. I think it's, it's a rare opportunity for us to see visually, uh, you know, the, the, the real rituals, you know, uh, what kind of clothing they wore and what kind of food uh, were used in those mm -hmm. rituals. So it's a, it's a very, very valuable uh, resource for uh, understanding yes, yes. life, especially the royal life in, yeah. in, uh, in the past. Uh, now, um, you have been active in uh, your efforts to retrieve those cultural uh, yes. properties, and I'm, I'm curious about how different groups in Korea are reacting to mm -hmm. the return of those cultural properties this time. So uh, are Koreans m mostly happy about this? Yeah, most Koreans hate the return of these books. And the Minister of Culture announced that it will have a uh, positive impact on retrieving uh, other Korean looted or exported cultural relics from other countries. And 
the crew members of uh, airlines which delivered these books from Paris to Korea was very happy to deliver them. And but the the Dr. Byung-sun Park, who first discovered these books, were uh, little little bit disappointed. Uh, like uh, the professor said, the, she claimed that it, it, these books should be should be not loaned but returned to for good. Mm -hmm. um, it may be an obvious question, but why did the French government refuse to return it for good and took the the form of lease, five year lease? Oh. Uh, most most experts uh, think that uh, they they don't want to retrieve all Korean documentary heritages mm -hmm. because they have many documentary heritages and other relics from Korea mm -hmm. and other countries too. So if they retrieve all these uh, properties, uh, just return just return to other countries and other other countries will. Um, proposed the, re the retrieving the cultural heritage from France more, so mm -hmm. French government is uh, kind of afraid of the global movement of retrieving. I see. So it may set a precedent to the future cases. Yes. So if they return all these goods for good, yes. then it may set a sort of a precedent example, yes. uh, and other cases would follow. Yes. And in a way, it's a sort of a battle between the former colonizers and the colonies, because in most uh, cases, they took the, the colonizers took the cultural properties from yes. the former colonies. So I'm sure that it will be an important issue in the coming years, and on one of the major issues in international law, I right. guess. Um, so, um, as this case of the Wagyu Jangak book showed, Korea faces many challenges in retrieving the cultural properties, and I think it will be a bigger, big issue in Korean administration of cultural properties in the coming years. So, could you tell us the challenges or difficulties that we have in particular? Yeah, we have uh, many uh, international treaty uh, regarding the returning of uh, cultural property. Uh, 1940, uh, 1954, uh, we have a uh, Hague uh, uh, the treaty, and then 1970, we have a UNESCO uh, treaty, and 1995, we have a, a UNIDRAW uh, treaty uh, regarding the returning of uh, cultural property. Uh, all these uh, uh, treaties, they have an uh, uh, effective date about the treaty and the, all the treaties will would be effect, affected uh, uh, after the 1945 or 1970 uh, or 1940, uh, 1995. So, uh, but most of our uh, cultural property they were taken they were taken away before 1945 or 1970. So uh, we don't have a benefit of uh, returning the uh, our cultural property from. Uh, with that, uh, signing the, the, the international treaty, so we don't, uh, we, we cannot trust it, uh, mm -hmm. to depend on the, the this uh, property. So uh, we should uh, uh, set a, a negotiation uh, between the nation to nation uh, basis as well. That's mm -hmm. why uh, the national uh, international treaty is not a, uh, everything about the retaining the. The international property. I see. So, uh, because we have a longer history of our cultural properties yeah, right, right, being right. taken by these countries, yeah. we cannot totally mm. depend on these international treaties yeah, okay. uh, that were signed later. Yeah, yeah. Wagyu was taken away uh, the way back, like uh, in the 19th century, <laughs> 19th not, in, century, in, so not even in 20th it's been century. Very long. So yeah. that makes it a lot more difficult. Right, right, yeah. And I, I hear that in this case of the French repatriation of those books to Korea, um, I hear that they uh, sort of um, talked with the French intellectuals and yes. they uh, got the sympathy from the French intellectuals who became the supporters yeah. of this repatriation. So uh, that's why it took so long. For us to repatriate all That's those true. items, right. um, but such difficulties notwithstanding, haven't there been cases of successful return? Yeah, uh, in internationally. Yeah, in, uh, recently in Italy, we have a very uh, uh, 
encouraging uh, the case about the returning the, uh, uh, the cultural property. So uh, the Italy, Italian uh, the government they set a uh, negotiation with uh, many uh, uh, the mu museums in the U.S. Mm -hmm. like uh, the, the Getty Museum and the Metropolitan Museum, and uh, they uh, they set a, a started the negotiation uh, since 2006, and uh, it's been like uh, three years of um, negotiating the the terms of uh, returning the cultural property. And they uh, returned many of uh, their uh, stolen property, which is stranded, which was stranded in the U.S. Uh, and, but they uh, still are doing some negotiation with the U.S. government uh, still. But uh, at least uh, they, get, they returned many of uh, their own cultural property. And that's very uh, encouraging news to us as well. I see. So that may set a precedent to uh, the, the following cases. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think one of the difficulties is proving the illegality or forcefulness in taking those items to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, and for some items which were taken away such a long time ago, it may be very hard to track how yeah. they were gotten into the hands of those countries. Absolutely. Right. Um, so it, we have a lot of work to do, I guess. And recently, President Ri Lee myung um, uh called for the establishment yes. of a government body which specializes uh, the repatriation of cultural properties under the Cultural Heritage Administration. Yes. I think that this is an important step. Yes. And in relation to this kind of effort, could you tell us about what the government should do and what the public should do? in uh, promoting mm -hmm. this issue? And, uh, first, the Korean government should educate Koreans also because for the next generations, they need to know how many cultural relics are, uh, are looted or exported to other countries so they can continue their effort to retrieve, it, retrieve it, these cultural relics from other countries. And second, the uh, Korean government uh, should have uh, should have close ties with the countries which want to retrieve their cultural relics from other countries. So they could be helpful to make some global movement with these countries. And the third, uh, we need to. We need to make an effort to the, the people of nations who looted Korean treasures uh, realize the need to return these Korean treasures. Be, uh, by doing so, uh, the nations of the people of these nations can support the movement of uh, retrieving Korean treasures, and they will. They will, they will have a pressure to their government, so the government will, will have a willing to, mm -hmm. uh, to have an agreement with the Korean government. Um, so in conclusion, uh, maybe, uh, Professor Lee, what should be the future uh, task that lies in front of us and how, how, how can we achieve you know, our goals in this yeah. regard? Most of uh, uh, the movement of uh, returning the cultural property has been executed by the uh, non-governmental uh, body, like uh, non-government uh, organization and the uh, uh, religious group, like uh, Buddhist. So now it's time for the, the government to step up and uh, uh, to raise their voice uh, in returning the, the cultural property. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of uh, our counterpart nation, they are not happy about uh, negotiating the term with a non-governmental body. So it's time to uh, some set up uh, the special committee of uh, uh, the returning the cultural property in our own uh, governmental body. So uh, President uh, Lee Myung-bak, uh, uh, he said uh, we will uh, the make some uh, committee about uh, the returning the cultural property in the near future. So now it's time to uh, get into the more uh, the practical way of uh, retaining the property for uh, the, the governmental uh, uh, the basis. So 
uh, the government and the, uh, the private sector uh, should uh, get together to uh, retain the body, uh, retain the, the cultural property uh, with uh, uh, the, the other uh, nations. I see. So uh, repatriation of cultural properties is a very specialized mm -hmm. field, mm -hmm. even in the cultural diplomacy. Definitely. So I think the government uh, should learn from the experience of the civilian efforts, but uh, sometimes the official route is the strongest uh, you know, power right. that can negotiate from you know, state to state kind of negotiation. Right. So I think uh, it, may be ref it may reflect uh, in the Korean people's cultural sort of reassurance or cultural pride that right, right. now we are uh, putting our resources and efforts yeah. in this area as well after the economic growth and, and, and all. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today's um, uh, in focus, I would like to thank both of you, Professor you. Lee and Ms. Yim, yes. for giving us your valuable time and insights uh, to make this program a very productive one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.